Hi, this is Warren from the ICA with another Resolve tip. And I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look like Resolve. No, this is FCP7, version 7. Uh, lots of people have been asking me about getting the images in and out of Resolve. And I must admit, with 8.1, what we're using here, uh, this seems to be a lot easier, both from an XML point of view, if you're coming out as FCP7 or X, and also if you're coming out of Avid with an AAF. Here we have an FCP sequence. A couple of things you can do to make my life easier, or your life easier, is uh, pull this down to roughly two layers. It can handle multiple layers, but two layers is easy to manage in the, in the Resolve Color page. So drag these extra shots down if you've been cutting moldy angles or cameras. Just hold the Shift key down. You can click on this layer here, and that will just pull straight down onto V2. Same with this. Hold Shift on your keyboard and then click and bring it down and you will not lose sync. If you don't do that and you just hold it, you can danger of pulling these guys down together. Okay, so what you need to do is just click on him, hold shift, and just bring it down and you won't lose any sync there. If we explore what we've got going on here, we have um, a color corrected sequence there. So this is actually color corrected in the three way. Uh, we can see by turning this off here, that is a three-way color corrector that I've used. And also uh, here we have a conventional clock wipe. So most wipes are supported now, basic wipes and dissolves. Here we have a V2 layer that we can see. And on the V2 layer I've done a zoom and I've also used uh, a filter effect in there, a light ray effect. Okay. So, you know, I can up the amount of that like that. So that's really obvious. What I need to do, oh, one of the last things here, this is a text file. So this is text, it's not an MOV or a video file, so it won't be read in Resolve. So, you know, you need to know that, you know, don't be alarmed when you don't see that in Resolve, okay? Because this would be unsupported there, but it will be there when we come back. I always select the whole sequence first file at the top here and you need to export as an XML at the bottom like that. Version 5 is good and let's call this Warren test like that. Save. Let's go to resolve and I'm going to it straight away open up a new project. And I don't want to save that or we'll go Warren test again. Now I don't have to worry about setting any of this because I want to drive these settings from the XML and make my project exactly the same in Resolve as it was in Final Cut Pro. So skip browse, we don't need the media at this stage. Go to conform and we hit the load tab that's over here to find that XML that I've just made. Warren test, click on that and open. Now, automatically set the project settings, so that means our resolution size, whether are HD or SD, frame rate, automatically import the clips into the media pool. One of the problems we have here is that we have multiple layers that are not being used. So there's something you can do there which will make life a lot easier. Obviously, you can come here fold that down, right click and remove track. Well what I find is easier is if you come into here and go, let's just hide this guy, back here. If you're in here, what you need to do is to go to sequence, delete tracks, video tracks, all empty tracks. So this means delete all empty ones then make your XML much easier and you will only get your two layers coming through to resolve. This, as you can see, is obviously a lot harder to manage to actually see what is going on and what you're doing. But just to explain here, this is where you can see that clock wipe and you do get a transition icon here like this and if you unlock that you can just right click transition effect you could then go and change that to any of these 
or you could take that transition away, or you could add a transition. Normally we're not doing this sort of thing in Resolve, but you could go in there and change someone's cut by using these tools here, which are really well explained in the manual what they do. So now we can see why it's an advantage to pull these down the two layers, purely if it's just down to space. We can scroll this, but it's much easier if we're only looking at two layers. And again, we can see the clock white there by that transformation. Let's look at that zoomed in shot. It's not zoomed in and you do not see the effect on the fish. You do not see the final three-way gray. So beware of that. If you are doing some color correction still in the three-way, you don't see it here. You color correct these fish red. When you go back to final cap, you will get double amounts of red. Let's look here. Now, we do have an option here in 8. If I right-click on that thumbnail of the mini, I can go use sizing information from XML. This will be the same from Avid with an AAF. If I do that, I get exactly the same sizing information, so I can grade that using the same. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a grade across all of this, just to save some time. So if I go to track mode, add a new serial node, come down here to our favorite little tab called three-way color, just Make that towards some sort of a magic hour by taking out blacks down a lot, but whites up, so this is adding a bit of contrast. And in our mids, I'm going to add a little bit of golden like that. Now, because that's in track, that's gone across everything. We have a grade. Okay. I could also do a resize here, and that will obviously be resized when it goes back into Final Cut Pro. I would recommend doing resizes in here. It's very good quality and normally nine times out of ten if you're grading, you're grading with a director or a DP. They are the guys that should be in charge and making the decisions on framing. So in my eyes this is a good place to do it. Obviously if you've already done it in Final Cut you can take that information and you could do it there and match it there or Let's not do that in that track mode. Let's do that here in clip mode on that guy. Take him in and just zoom in right up like that. So I've just zoomed that one in. Obviously now I'm in clip mode. I could grade these individually slightly different. But for the sake of this, we're now going to render this. Session render. What you will notice, it automatically comes up with FCP XML round trip click on the downshift arrow, you can see you also have an option in there, Avid AAF round trip or export straight to FCP. That This option is more for doing dailies when you want to make files or transcode things. Let's leave that there and let's just send this background in the same way that we got it. ProRes 422HQ. We need to find somewhere to render that to. So I'm going to keep it in my render folder like this. OK and always forward slash. We call that Warren. Now the advantage of that, it ticks all the right boxes, puts it into the right settings, so in other words the right flavors that will be read in Final Cut Pro in terms of your codex. Render clip with unique file name. So hopefully it's going to do everything right so when you get this 30 second ad back to Final Cut Pro, it will all relink. So then we render. If that renders coming to the end, that's moving pretty fast just on this 17 laptop. I've got nine and a half frames a second there. And the advantage I like about it is I can see it rendering through. Uh, normally, obviously, I'd have this coming out to my uh, my SDI grading monitor, and I can put, judge, look at all my color corrections if they're going through there. In uh, the time that they're rendering in, obviously, if I've done a lot more grading, it will render slower. Okay, so that's rendered. Next important thing to do, and do it in this order, is to go to conform 
and instead of now loading we export let's export and I'm going to put that in the same place sequence one resolve save XML let's go back to FCP now I'm in the same project here as we can see what I need to do is now load that new XML file import XML sequence from resolve which is the one that I just made choose Vimeo yes okay so that and then what we do is to go to sequence one from resolve click on that and now it will bring the fish in with the original color like I said they have now got double red color correction on them but my three way is still there it is still live I can still turn it off and on just be wary of that obviously my resolve is there with the zoomed up duck okay my second layer up there is there like that with the filter on it remember we did not see the filter when we were in resolve and here our text is still there which we didn't see in resolve so hope you enjoyed that very simple little tutorial on round tripping uh, if you're interested in the ICA classes there's a whole list of 2012 classes going up on the iColorist website. Also check out the Facebook. You're obviously looking at this so you know about the free movies. Um, have a great Christmas and all the best for 2012. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.